what's up people welcome to my channel please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification button so that whenever a new video drop of drop on my channel you'll be notified we are going to look at an interesting story a few weeks ago i think we said the last week the nigeria football federation nff announced the reconstitution of the technical club the senior mayor national team that's the super egos the federation retained austin while one as interim technical advisor while former nigerian world cup star and former under 20 boys head coach Emmanuel Monique was appointed as a chief coach and an immediate assistant to Egoavo. According to the Nigeria Football Federation spokesman, he said that the, due to the positive performance of Super Egos as the just concluded African tournament, we consider it very necessary to reappoint Coach Esten Egoavo as the interim technical manager. And he said that the coach that he promised us will take over from Enguavo after Sero will no longer be Super Egos coach, that they will not continue for that negotiation with him, that Enguavo will remain our national team coach for now, and he will take us through the qualification for the World Cup Qatar 2022. And Chief Coach Amonike will be assisting him. Here is my worry. Why will the super egos or the, why will the super egos be administered by two senior coaches such that Monica will be assisting Eguavo? For me, that sounds a bit bizarre. So, the super egos will now have two coaches, Coach Justin Eguavo and Emmanuel Amonike. So, my own worry here is that why should the NFF? appoint two coaches Eguavon, who they say will be assisted by coach Imana and Monique. Will there not be a conflict of interest? Because as we all know, Imana and Monique is not a small coach. Imana and Monique has coached the national team or the Tanzania national team. Although Tanzania national team is a smaller team compared to Nigeria. Why did the super ego stand at the NFF? Why did they not just appoint Amonike as the chief coach, giving one, two years, three years contract or something. Why Austin Eguavon? Why must Austin Eguavon be on the Nigeria coaching crew? As we all know, Austin Eguavon's performance in this last half continent, removing Sentinel, being frank, was very awful. We expected Austin Eguavon to carry the Super Eagles very far in this just concluded half continent. But what did he do? He brought us down. Dennis Ray, our former coach in the last Afghan tournament that was hosted in Egypt, he took us to the semi final. We were knocked out by the Eversham winners of Julia. And we came back home with the bronze medal. But Coach Austin Gabon brought nothing home. He brought nothing home. But the NFF, as usual, they want to retain him as a coach. Why should he be retained as a coach? Why did it Gabon just be? Relief of his job as a as a chief coach. Why not just bring him out? Okay, since we know that you cannot afford Pesero because Pesero demands might be very high and Super Egos might not be able to pay his salary the NFF. So why did they not just bring in Amonike as a full coach, put him on two years or three years contract and see how his performance will be so that we know that he's the one just handling the issue? Why should he be an assistant? To Austin Eguavo. When we all know that Austin Eguavo performance in the last Nations Cup was very awful. Eguavo patterns or style of play is very is not is not good enough. It didn't take us far. Why do we not think that Eguavo will take us far if we should eventually qualify for the World Cup? If Nigeria qualifies for the World Cup, how far can Eguavo take us to? Can he cross the group stage with the way Eguavo is coaching? As a coach, can he? These are questions that we, we Nigerians are concerned about. Because as it stands now, the performance that Dennis Ray exhibited as our longest serving coach is far better than what Eguavon has done in the short term. He has done nothing. He has done nothing, but the NFF has usually decided to retain him as a coach. But actually, only time we tell, time will determine 
for that decision that NFL made is right. Then another story that we have again hmm, is that our Super Cup, hmm, we like say Super Cup, I will, Super Cup. I will say no, our Super Policeman, no, if you don't Super Policeman, I back here. Hmm. Last year, this man was suspended by the Nigerian Police Force for having link with the big internet first time in Nigeria, Hush Puppy. He was suspended. He's under investigation. Whether he has any communication or any link with Hush Puppy. As of that was under suspension, under investigation, he committed another crime. <laughs> what is this crime now? Baba is working for a drug cartel, international drug cartel, that are smuggling drugs through plane to Nigeria. Baba Kiari was caught. Immediately, they provided a video evidence showing this man giving money to an Indian official to release these boys. Why they were some of their boys that were arrested at the Atano National Airport for drug trafficking, cocaine, about 25 kg of cocaine, as of their arrested. Now, this guy was doing different kind of negotiation to ensure that those cocaine were released to them. And summer, summer, the NDLEA. They are smart. They are investigated. The officer played along with him. And Bakari was caught in the act. He has been arrested. But me, for me personally, I'm not surprised that this man is corrupt. Because all the police officers in Nigeria, let me not just say all, because it will be unfair. The majority of the police officers in Nigeria are very corrupt. Like, imagine Nigeria. You will see Kuru Kuru afternoon. Koro Koro money, police officer will be collecting bribe in public. Collecting bribe. The police officer will not even be ashamed. They will just be collecting bribe. I would never several times they collect 100 naira, collect 150. And there have been cases in Nigeria that civilians have been killed by policemen for not giving them bribe. There was a case that happened some years ago in a boy, Sabakaliki, when a motorcycle rider. Refused to give a policeman a bribe, and that policeman shot this motorcycle rider, shot him, and that man died. We did not hear anything again about that story. The only thing that we heard was that those police officers were dismissed. But we don't know that they were tried. There, they are still the case is still ongoing. We don't know because our judicial system is very slow. So, there are many backyards in the Nigerian police force. In short, over I can categorically say that over 80%. Of Nigerian police officers are very corrupt. Particularly the low ranks police officer, those rank and file police officers, those corporals, CP, those, even the high ranking police officers, they are very corrupt. When people commit crime, they will release them after they have committed crime. This part, after they have committed crime, they will release them, pay them. There have been several cases, that, there have been several reports on police abuse. Um, Corruption in the Nigerian police force. But our government is doing nothing about it too. Because our government itself is corrupt. Truth be told, almost everybody in Nigeria is corrupt. Let's be sincere. Eh, corruption is like normal thing. Eh? But it's not good because it's killing our country. It's killing our country. That just is simple truth. It's killing our country. So, Abakiari now is in the NDLA for study. They are trying his matter. They are still investigating him. They say NDLA. Has gone to court. They have conducted the detention on that to detain for more time so that they can do more investigation over his matter. And they will try him and carry out necessary prosecution over him. And I just hope that this Abakari issue will be a lesson for every police officer on the street. We should do our work the right way. Police officer should live with by his salary and do his work diligently. All these things that we are doing in Nigeria where people are just collecting bribe. You see a police officer that is a mere DSP, mere CSP, mere CP, mere ACP, DCP. They are building houses everywhere. And sometimes you now ask yourself that these police officers, these policemen, how much are they being paid? That they are just building houses because if the police of, officers 
are living by their salary. The highest thing they can build. Maybe it's just a block of flats. But these people, they build houses everywhere. That's unfair on the society. Because where they are collecting one, bribe, doing all sorts of dubious things. The other story I want to look at is a story that happened about last uh, week or last two weeks about a university or should I say university not university or the search is polytechnic but should I be other polytechnic student in uh, Ogun State. Now this lady was on her way. She went to the police station. She carried a a pack of things. She had lots of things in her bag and like a we call it uh, a lino. She had it. And they asked her. She went to the police station. She wants to go and see her friend in the police station. The policemen that were on duty. On duty, because they asked her, What is in that bag? And she said that his pregnancy kit. They were like, How old are you? And the lady said, I'm 24 years old. What are you doing with the pregnancy test kit? The lady was like, ah, I am a young daughter. I don't have rights to carry pregnancy kit now. They said, Saturday has not the first time I'm going to show you. say Jesus Christ, that they detain this lady for being possession of pregnancy kit. You see again, another abuse by the Nigerian police force. It's of us to have people that protect their own party in Nigeria. We are having moral policemen. Now, they're pushing morality to people. That's unfair. Carrying pregnancy kit in Nigeria is not a crime. Or is there any in Nigeria that says that if you carry pregnancy kit, you are committing a crime? The answer is no. But this lady was arrested. She was detained for carrying pregnancy kit. Isn't that bad? That's bad. The Nigerian police force needs to stop this kind of things. They will just go about, they will be harassing civilians that are going about doing their legitimate. These people are not com- that not commit crime. But if they see criminals, they will arrest them. Sometimes they will not arrest them. Even if they are arrested, they will collect on that court, collect bribe. Before you see these civilians, they will now start walking on the street. I am a free man. I am a free man. No, it's unfair now. How would they just be harassing that lady? Because that lady carried a pregnancy test kit. If she wants to go and check herself whether she's pregnant, it's all right now. That one is a private affair. But this police officer, they detain her. If not for her sister, then she went on Twitter and said that police arrested my sister for carrying a pregnancy kit. As in Nigerian police force, I released a statement ah, that uh, they just uh, detained her for a few hours. Asking her questions to doing their normal duty to know where she's what she's carrying, whether it's a uh, incriminating material that she's carrying or not. But my whole question to them is that why should you detain her over carrying pregnancy test kit? Is that the duty of the Nigerian police? Ne? The Nigerian police force. The problem with Nigeria is that we have police where I don't even know their responsibility and they don't know that they are this is to fight crime. Get the society rid of crime, but they are going about a rising common civilian that they committed one crime on the other. That unfair on we Nigerians. It's very unfair. It is. They are not moral policemen. Policemen that want to teach us morality, people that call it bribe. Isn't that unfair? So that lady eventually they released that she went to. But the point here is this: is that there are still many people on the streets that in Nigerian police. Force is doing this kind of thing, unnecessary harassment, just harassing the legitimate citizens of Nigeria for no just cause. Pregnancy test kit, you will be asking somebody questions. As she said, that I carry pregnancy, I'm with a pregnancy test kit. She can, now it's finished. They will go, where should the Nigerian police force be asking her more questions? What are you doing with a pregnancy kit? What is a young girl like you doing with a pregnancy kit? But the point here is that in Nigeria, Adults with this from the age of 18 and above, she's 24 years old, so she has a right to carry whatever she wants to carry. When well, I drop on this, was a no year old, you stay harassing her. Auntie, her sister now cried on the internet on her Twitter handle that hey, they have arrested my sister, oh, they detained her over pregnancy kit because she carried pregnancy kit, or is it because she bought pregnancy kit? And that's why Nigeria police were out of shame, you know, as usual, that they now release that. And she went to Nigeria police was should really stop this. This is not good to our country. We need to learn to respect people's fundamental human rights. 
The only way that leadership that be retained is if maybe she's carrying any dangerous weapon. Let's say gun. Incriminating materials. Let's say EDI. Maybe she can be arrested and be able to end the LA. Anything that is not contraband, she's carrying. She should not be harassed. Because she can only be questioned. And when she's questioned, she's certified free. Then she should go free, uh, about her normal responsibility. But why should they harass her? That's very unfair. Like, very unfair. I would, uh, I can't even imagine being in that kind of situation. I would like, ah, what did I do now? It sounds funny. But these things happen daily in our great country, Nigeria. Here is the point. Let everybody go about doing their work legitimate with responsibility. And Nigeria will surely be a better country. Thank you very much for listening to listening and watching my channel and i appreciate your good intentions towards my channel and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel share my videos with your loved ones thanks and god bless you